Hello my friend and welcome back. Today let's do a little card pool and see what kind of message the universe has for us today. We pulled a new card! <laughs> I feel like every time I do a card pull, we're pulling like the same cards, which isn't necessarily bad. Um, it's just the universe reinforcing those, message, those messages, but it's just kind of fun to pull something new. So we pulled the Akasha card. Your guidance is divinely guided. So the message of this card is really telling us to trust our intuition. And when we first start working with our intuition, it is really, really difficult to trust it and to know, like, is this my thinking mind? Is this my ego? You know, is or is this truly my intuition? And what we have to understand is that Divine guidance comes to us in a few different ways, in many different ways, in infinite different ways, if you will. <laughs> but, so it can come to us through our inner guidance, through our intuition, that inner knowing, that feeling, or if you're getting, you know, the downloads, the messages, the claircognizance, or you know, if you're seeing guidance or seeing a solution or what you should be doing, um, that is your inner guidance and how you can start to trust that a little bit more is number one, the universe will send you validation. It will help you to reinforce that what they're saying is true. And you can, and sometimes it comes like in the outside world and you seeing a picture or somebody saying something or something like that would, that would just like reinforce what you thought was, you know, divine guidance, your intuition. Sometimes you will just take action on that feeling and that action will pan out perfectly, you know, and then you will, that will help to reinforce you know, that that was your intuition and that you listened correctly and everything like that. The other ways that we can start to trust our intuition is when we really dive into the inner work. Processing old emotions, processing emotions as they come up, as you feel them, processing old karmas or traumas or things like that. And when we start to, you know, dive into our spiritual practices and, you know, the spiritual content that you like to consume, all of that kind of adds to your intuition. And you might not feel like everything is connected, but everything is connected. So when you are, you know, on top of your meditation and your breath work and doing this inner work and as things come up, all of that helps to clear the passageways for the messages of your intuition. All of that helps to just clear like the blockages, like this is kind of gross, but like an artery that gets, you know, our intuition is very much is like the blood trying to flow through your arteries and you know us living in the standard world a lot of times we have built up a lot of like blockages like a lot of crud around in the artery that is making it harder for the blood to flow through and as we do this spiritual work every day that we are living this and that we are in this helps to clear those blockages and it helps to let the blood, your intuition, flow more freely, flow easier, 
faster and helps to deliver the messages with a lot more ease and grace. So the more you in use your intuition, the more you want to tap into it, that also, that desire also helps to clear it because your subconscious is so amazing that even when you just sent the intention that you're asking that you tune into your intuition more, your body knows what to do. Your subconscious knows what to do. The divine obviously knows what to do. So even just by setting that simple intention, you know, I ask that I, you know, am able to tune into my intuition with more clarity than I ever have before. And you know, when you start to set that intention on a daily basis, on an hourly basis, on an as needed basis, that also helps to clear those, that pathway, those arteries to allow those messages to flow through a little bit more freely. So that is your inner guidance and that inner guidance, you know, comes to us through the clairs, you know, your clairvoyance, which is your mind's eye, clairaudience, hearing, claircognizance, when the information is just downloaded into your head, you know, clairaudience is also like when you hear that thought, you know, um, if you're driving or something and you're, you're going to go straight and you hear turn left that is your, that's Claire audience as well, as well as hearing music or something like that. And um, there are a couple, oh yeah, Claire sentience is like that feeling. And that feeling can be, it can be an emotional feeling, but it can also be a physical feeling. That like little tingle on your skin or sometimes, and not in a bad way, but uh, if you feel like weight on you, uh, a lot of that is clairsentience and I forget what it's called but there's also smelling and tasting those are the clairs that I experience the least but I have experienced the smelling but never the tasting but that's how our intuition comes to us is you know through all of those clairs and you will find that some clairs for you are a little bit stronger than others and for me personally um, Claire Cognizance and Claire Audience are my two strongest Claire's. I do experience clairvoyance pretty often, but it's not as strong as the others. And you will, as you start to experiment and as you start to play, remind, you know, let me remind you that the, the divine is always in joy. They are always in a state of play and they are always in a state of wonder and you know, bliss almost. And the divine wants us to also come from that state. So, you know, when we're wanting, you know, we may feel like we want our intuition to be strong. So when we come across serious situations, we know what to do. And that is true. But remember, us thinking that something is a big deal or a serious situation is our judgment to that. To the divine, you know, we're here having, you know, a holographic experience. Like we are, the way I always kind of think of it is like that we are kind of like in a video game and therefore, you know, creating our reality, things aren't as serious as we can feel like they are, you know, because when you keep zooming out you know, zooming out from yourself, you will realize that things, you know, things that are happening to you are a very small part of what's happening in the grand scheme of things. And then remember that judgment thing that when you go to judge, well, it's like, well, there's a lot of crazy things going on in the whole world. Like I zoom down and it doesn't make me feel any better. Well, keep in mind your judgment to it. And when you release that judgment and you view things as perfect and that the way that things have to be and it is only your judgment to it, like if we knew that we really couldn't hurt each other, you know, and that 
you know, a physical hurt or emotional hurt is just something to help us learn and grow, but it's, you know, it's not actually hurting you, then we would feel kind of a lot differently about a lot of different things. And that is kind of where the divine is coming from. So that is why the divine is always encouraging us to find joy and be in a state of play because that is the truth. That is the state of our natural being is to be in play and is to be in joy and is to not worry and not suffer and not struggle. That is our natural state. But again, like this human experience has added a lot of those blockages that is making the flow of the divine harder to come through. But that doesn't mean that we can't do things to counteract, you know, what this physical world has instilled in us, you know, because we can change our beliefs, we can change our mindset, we can choose how we respond to things in this world. So that is all about the inner guidance. However, since the divine is everywhere and the divine is everything, the divine also speaks to you with outside signs. And they speak to you through, you know, it can be repeating numbers that you see everywhere, feathers, um, music. If you ever are, if you ever saw something, anything, a leaf on the ground or a sky in the cloud or a feather and it spoke to you, that is the divine speaking to you. Don't ever ignore that because that is not, you're not crazy. You know, if you ever say you are in between, you know, buying, I don't know, like a, a, a decorative frog or a decorative owl and, you know, you move through your, your day and you, and you see an owl and it spoke to you. That is your sign that, you know, that is help the divine helping you choose because we have free will. So it is up to us and we can choose anything we want and there's infinite timelines and nothing is set in stone. So we can choose our path as we go and there is no wrong choice. You know, you might just learn. You might just learn for a little longer than you want, <laughs> but it doesn't make it wrong. And speaking of that learning, that is where this Akasha, if you've ever heard of um, the Akashic Records, that is what this is talking about. So the Akashic Records are basically all of the knowledge, all of the learnings down to micro things like formulas on how to do scientific things, all of that knowledge, anything that you could ever think about wanting to know or wanting to learn or any experience that has a lesson to be taught from, all of that knowledge is kept what's in call, what is called the Akashic Records. And the Akashic Records are from all time and all space and encompasses all knowledge. And we have the ability to tap into those Akashic records at any time. And we are already doing it and we don't even realize it. You know, um, a channeler that I like put it into perspective that it can be even micro things about what you should be having for dinner, or maybe this would be best for you right now, or you know how to take care of your body, how to take care of your mind, how to take care of this vessel, or even like even at work and you have a problem to solve and the solution kind of comes to you. That is all coming from the Akashic Records, you know, that knowing, which is all filtered through the divine and your guidance and comes to you through your guidance. And that is why this card is saying that your guidance is divinely guided because 
there is like this knowledge of the Akashic records and your guides, your divine guides are kind of like, like picking out the book and like kind of sending it to you as you need because we obviously don't need, we have access to all of the Akashic records, but we don't need all of the Akashic records all at the same time because like our little minds would just explode. So we are able to tap into things as we need them. You know, sometimes I'm sure that you can get yourself to a point where you could tap into any sort of information, but usually the information that you're tapping into is what you need at that time. Because, right, you know, remember that we live in the present. So the divine doesn't exactly send us things that we will need in the future. Sometimes we are set up to learn lessons that we will utilize that information in the future. But as far as like immediate things and knowledge, it will send it to us at the perfect time that we need it, as we need it, and not before and not after, because the divine is instant. You know, there is no time for the divine. So if you're like, wow, that knowledge came to me right away and it came to me so quickly and I needed it right then, that's because like the divine is on point. The divine, there is no delay. And if you are asking a question that you're not getting an answer to or you're not getting guidance to and you're like, well, they didn't hear me or they're thinking about it or it's taking a little time for the divine to come through, there's a reason for that. So just have faith that there is a reason for that and you know things will become clear for you when they need to be clear and not before. That is why the divine encourages us to live in the present moment because if we stay in the present moment and follow our divine inspiration for the action that we should be taking, in that moment, we will always have every single thing we need. If you ever think about, if you think that you need something and then you ask yourself, do I need that right now? Most of the time, the answer is no. Most of the time, if you think about it in this moment, right now, right now, do I have every single thing that I need right now? Do I have all of the knowledge that I need right now? Do I have all of the inspiration I need right now? And usually that answer is yes. So that information, that knowledge of the Akashic Records will come to you as you need it. And sometimes, yes, sometimes there is a delay for a reason. Like say you're currently working on a project and you could use some answers right now and you're asking for those answers. Sometimes the divine wants us to use our brain and to get those things churning because you never know the way things are falling together. You never know that, you know, maybe you not having the answer is tipping over a domino that is going to be for your highest good later on. You just never know. So that's why just stay in the present moment, ask for that guidance and keep moving through. And that doesn't mean that you can't ask for guidance on something that will be happening on the f in the future. Just know that as far as your needs being met and the guidance that you need and the knowledge that you might want from Akasha is always going to be there for you exactly when you need it. And it's only when you're thinking about the future that you get stressed out about it. You know, it's only when you're like, well, I need to do this and I'm going to have to do this and this is going to happen and this is going to happen and future, future, future. That is where the suffrage comes in. So when you're starting to creating that suffrage through stress, stress is suffering. Bring yourself into the present moment. What do I need right now? Do I have everything that I need right now? So that is our message about this beautiful card, this beautiful Akasha card. I thought that that was such a fun message and, you know, I encourage you to play with your intuition and here's another way you can play is ask for specific signs. For example, and I love this example because um, my boyfriend is not super in 
to spirituality. He's open and supportive, but just not super into it. And he, we were talking one day and he, on the phone, and I was, and he was like, you know, I just want to kind of know that I'm on the right track. And I was like, well, why don't you ask your guides? Like, why don't you ask the divine? Why don't you, you know, ask them to send you a sign that if you're on the right track, why don't you ask them to send you, I don't know, a rose? And he was like, yeah, okay, okay. Well, he didn't realize it. He looks down and his socks had a rose on it. And then he said that he's been seeing roses everywhere and he never sees roses. And so that is just kind of like that reinforcement and that validation of one, being able to speak directly with the divine and two, that he was on the right path. So it's okay to ask for those signs. So and I encourage you to ask for those signs. And when you are in the midst of a choice, one thing or the other, you can ask for a color or something specific, like say you, whatever, you're choosing between A and B. You can say, A, please send, if I'm supposed to choose A, please send me a red apple. And if I'm in cho supposed to choose B, please send me an orange, the fruit. And you know, you can ask for it in the next day or two. Please send it to me soon. And then you only have to ask once. You have to remember what sign is for what. Sometimes I have to write it down, but then just keep your eyes open and you'll see. You'll get the answer. The divine will always, the divine is always speaking to us. So I encourage you to play and have fun and let's enjoy this spiritual journey. Let's enjoy this intuitive journey and let's move forward with the confidence of knowing that we can tap in to the all-knowing Akashic Records whenever we need to. And sometimes we don't even have to ask. A lot of times the information just flows to us exactly when we need it. So let's have, you know, let's take a little bit of comfort in that to know that we are guided. We are divinely guided and the divine has all of the knowledge in the world wrap up, wrapped up in these a beautiful Akashic records and the divine wants us to share, to share it with us and the divine wants us to access it and to have it help us because that is what it's there for. So I want to thank you so, so much for tuning in. My name is Anne and I hope to see you tomorrow.